Hey good folks, I'm Avram here for CG Tuts and welcome to this old postbox tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to create this old highly detailed low poly postbox. As you can see the postbox is very high in details yet the poly amount is very uh, small. Actually we have 1306 uh, polygons in the entire scene. If I'll switch off from the textured view by hitting 5 on the keyboard you can see all the details we had are simply created by uh, the bump map let's start off fresh and build this model from the start create a new project file project new and use default and I'll call this one old postbox tutorial and we'll create a new scene and we'll save this scene as old postbox tutorial. Before we even start modeling, let's uh, switch for a moment to Photoshop. I have downloaded from the internet a few reference images. Over here on the right we have a relatively new postbox. Over here we have a different uh, model of the postbox. As you can see this is a pretty good example of a worn out uh, postbox. Worn out by the weather. Over here is the model that I actually used as a reference. Let's uh, switch back to Maya. Before we start modeling, let's set up the settings here. I'm not going to animate it, but I might animate in the future. So I'll switch the time to 25 frames per second. And I'm using centimeters. Now, I would like the model to be true to the world scale. And to find out what's the actual size of the post box, I've got this picture over here and right behind it I've got a brick wall. After doing a bit of research I found that these bricks are running between uh, 5 to 6 centimeters in height and I've counted 20 bricks behind this boost box. There is uh, the issue of perspective here. It might not be as high as uh, 20 bricks but I think it's close enough because 20 bricks equals to 120 centimeters which sounds like the right height for this sort of thing. I'll go back to Maya and I'll first start by creating a reference box. Shift right click to get the polygon menu and over here we got the polycube and I'll just create a quick cube here and let's see. I'll set the width to 3 and the depth to 3 as well and the height is uh, 20. Let's uh, center it on the grid and set the height to 10 so it would uh, start off at the bottom and 3 might be too uh, narrow. Let's set it to 5 maybe. 5 on 5, maybe even 10. Now I would need 3 more marks on the box. Um, we've got this edge here. After that we got the second edge and a third edge. Okay, let's uh, switch back to Maya. Usually I would uh, model by importing a reference image into Maya, but this time I modeled by simply eyeballing the image. So let's add some height divisions. We need three divisions here, so let's add one, two, and three divisions. Hit F10 on the keyboard to switch to edge mode. Double click on this edge here to get the loop and let's uh, raise it to the top. Let's switch actually to front view. From this point on we've got the top and up to here I would guess. And somewhere around here we've got this part OK. And I'm missing one uh, edge ring so let's add one. Shift right click and let's select insert edge loop tool and we'll place it around here I would say. This is our reference. In display let's create a new layer and we'll call this uh, layer reference and we'll switch it to transparent so we can see through it and it wouldn't be affected as it is just a reference image. Let's start off by creating a cylinder Shift right click and we'll go to poly cylinder. Create a cylinder and let's go into its inputs. 
we'll change the radius to 4 and let's change the subdivision to 30 and let's change the height to 0.2 and let's zero out its position and change the height to 0.1 we can actually set the radius to 4.2 uh, so this will be our base let's see let's go to side view and let's switch to f11 to get the face mode pick those faces and deselect the middle faces and that way we can we only get the top faces shift right click and go to extrude face and let's scale down these faces by 0.2 so that would mean 0.8 maybe that's too much let's say 0.9 extrude again hit G and let's drag this up let's uh, go to side view and let's extrude again shift right click extrude face let's drag it to 0.1 and extrude it by 0.1 as well so 1.1 let's uh, extrude again and drag it up to 0.1 as well let's get it back 0.1 so that will mean 0.9 okay now let's extrude again and this time we'll raise it to 0.2 extrude it by 0.2 so 1.2 and let's extrude again and let's raise it to 0.2 again and scale it back by 0.2 so that will mean 0.8 G to extrude again raise it to 0.1 extrude it by 0.1 so 1.1 and extrude it again by 0.1 sorry 0.1 and scale it back 0.9 okay let's extrude it again this will be the hatch drag it back to half a uh, square of a grid and let's uh, do the same ornament we just did let's uh, extrude it again so let's uh, extrude it up to here now let's create another extrusion hit G and we need to extrude it up to this point I would say and maybe scale it a bit wider and let's uh, extrude it again drag it up let's create another extrusion and this time scale it a bit wider here and create another extrusion drag it up and maybe a bit wider now uh, extrude again let's scale it move it up and start scaling down and again extrude move up scale down and this will be the roof let's scale it down and okay so this is our basic model let's get rid of the reference box for a second this is our basic shape obviously we need to bevel out some edges here and smooth out others but as far as the basic shape goes we are done so let's uh, start beveling and smoothing some edges to get a nicer look so let's see let's start with this edge right here let's switch to edge mode by, by hitting F10 on the keyboard and double click on this edge to get the edge loop shift right click hit bevel edge and we've got three segments and the offset actually looks fine to me other than that we, we need to tend to these edges here depending on how far away your model is from the camera I might leave these two and these two as is and just soften the edge but I would definitely take care of these edges here so double click on this edge and double click on this edge and shift right click let's bevel this edge here and set expand the offset a bit and maybe we, we can uh, be satisfied with just two segments yeah two segments is fine I think we should do the top and bottom edges as well so let's uh, select those and shift right click bevel edge and we'll set it to two segments and maybe offset it by 0.4 let's 
bevel out this edge a bit here hit G to repeat the last uh, action which was a bevel edge let's do this one as well and we can expand the offset and this one hit G and let's expand it as well let's see uh, obviously we've got uh, some uh, hardened edges here which shouldn't be hardened and others that are soft which shouldn't be soft so let's uh, take care of that real quick let's uh, switch to edge mode once again by hitting F10 on the keyboard and, and mark all the edges in the scene or in the model shift right click and go to soften harden edge soften edge now that softened all the edges and that made most of the model look smooth some of the uh, edges sh shouldn't be soft they actually should be hard and that's the reason for the uh, black shading we've got here uh, let's uh, pick the edges which shouldn't be uh, soft so that would be this one this one shift right click soften harden edge and harden edge the middle section here as well let's uh, double click on this one double click on this one hit G to repeat the process and that would harden the edge and this one as well hit G and let's see I think we are good to go okay next let's uh, do the hatch let's uh, switch to front view and let's see the hatch should expand from approximately here to here but I think we can add uh, some more divisions shift right click and hit insert edge loop tool and we want to insert a loop here and one here in the middle and we need to insert more borders here and another one here next we'll create the actual hatch we'll create the hatch from uh, torus so shift right click and let's pick poly torus and create one we'll set the subdivision axis to 4 as well as the height and we need to twist it to 45 degrees and there you go now let's rotate it on the x to 90 degrees and on the z to 45 let's uh, switch to front view and let's see let's uh, snap to the middle grid here we need to scale it down but as you can see the scale tool is offset by 45 degrees so let's uh, freeze the transformation modify freeze transformation and the scale is correct let's scale it down up to this point scale down on the y up to this point I would say okay now let's uh, switch to very smooth and pick these vertices and these vertices and scale those down a bit and now these and these and scale those on the X let's switch to side view to see how far inside it goes that's so uh, we can uh, drag it a bit more inside so we can hit F11 to get the face mode and we don't need these faces here we want as less um, polygons as possible okay and we can also get rid of these faces and yeah I think we are good to go actually let's just scale this one just a bit until we get rid of all the edges and uh, we can I uh, see some edges on the top here okay scale it a bit more we need to bevel out some edges here as well so let's see let's switch to edge mode and we need this edge ring and this one as well this edge this edge this one and this one let's uh, shift right click and bevel edge all the edges are actually working fine for me I think we just need to harden some edges here so let's see this one this one this one and this one can be hardened 
which would create a nice uh, crease here. We have uh, 600 more faces than in the original design and that's most likely because I've uh, beveled these edges here and these here which I haven't done in the original design and I've got uh, more visions in the top which I didn't have in the original design as well as the, these beveled edges but all in all we are still looking at a relatively low poly model and I think we are finished with the modeling part next I would like to tackle the UV layout let's apply real quick a material to the model right click on it and go to assign new material and we'll assign a blend next to the color I'll click on the checker box and go to file and here I've got a UV map reference image if you will Google UV map or UV map reference you will find tons of these maps and make sure you, you're using a large scale one let's uh, apply that one and obviously the UVs are not spread correctly at all and I think we've got some issues here yeah we've got divisions that aren't going all the way here but frankly this part is going to be on the ground so it doesn't really matter and more than that if it is going to be straight on the ground all the time it might be a good idea to get rid of, of all these uh, bottom edges so let's mark those and delete those that uh, took out some more faces out of the equation let's just make sure the bottom edges are set to our harden okay wonderful let's go back to our UV layout so let's uh, first start by applying a cylinder mapping since this shape in most is a cylinder go to create UVs and cylinder mapping let's set the projection to 360 and not 180 and at most you can see the projection is working fine for us Let it's stretching a bit as you can see on the x-axis so let's uh, switch to, to the UV editor UV texture editor okay let's toggle on the shaded UV display that way you can tell if, if any UVs are reversed and it doesn't seem that any UVs are reversed let's get rid of the image for a second there and no UVs are reversed okay cool let's uh, center those and let's see we can tell that they are stretching a bit on the x-axis so let's uh, switch to, to the scale tool let's pick all the UVs and let's see let's scale it a bit down on the x-axis scale it down so it won't uh, leave the edges of this uh, UV map and let's place it at the bottom we can even scale it a bit down more the most parts we are good and we can see we have some stretching over at the top let's switch to the side view and let's hit F11 to switch to the face mode and let's pick all these faces right here making sure we're not picking anything else and let's uh, create a planar mapping for it go to create UVs planar mapping and the angle is already set correctly for us let's uh, make sure the height and the width projection are the same to get a perfect rectangle so I just copied the height to the width and obviously we got some spreading here and that's because the bottom part is beneath the top part here so that would obviously create this uh, distortion in the texture let's see how we can tackle that let's select the UV shell tool and select the roof let's move it to the side so we can uh, focus on it for a second and switch to UVs mark all these UVs shift right click and select the smooth UV tool left mouse click and hold on unfold and, and right drag 
and that would smooth out completely our texture. As you can see, the texture is now spread out correctly and we don't have any uh, distortion in the texture. Since we have this uh, gap in the shape, we would expect the roof to be much more uh, decayed by the weather than the rest of the body. So it works fine for us. Let's uh, select Shell Tool and let's move it back here. And all we need to do now is scale it down until the grid is more or less the same size. And we can move it to the side here. Actually, we might need to scale it a bit down to make sure it fits. Let's get rid of the picture for a second there so we can uh, fit it completely. Okay. Since we are already here, let's uh, deal with the bottom. It's always a good idea to, ha to have all the UVs la laid out correctly. So let's uh, pick the face here and go to create UVs, planar mapping, copy the height and paste it to the width and scale it down and just place it here. We okay. Next, I would like to tend to the hatch. This space here might be a good place to spread out the, the hatch. So I think I'll move this one, move get it down and just move it to the bottom here, leaving this space for the hatch. Okay, let's go to create UVs and automatic mapping, making sure we, are, we only have three planes and hit project. And let's apply the UV texture to it. Right click on it and assign existing materials and that will be the blin. Let's switch to UVs, select all the UVs and go to the scale tool and start scaling it on the X axis until we get squares in the texture. Okay, so let's uh, move these out of the way so we can uh, deal with those more correctly. Okay, before we start uh, sewing and connecting all these uh, different edges, let's take a moment to think about what we're trying to achieve here. I would like the texture to be continuous for the front, obviously, and I would like the texture to be continuous with the top here. I would most like the texture to be continuous with the top and the sides because when the rain falls down on it you would expect to see decay marks caused by the rain uh, fluidly through the top to the sides. Now the bottom you would hardly see so the texture doesn't have to be fluid from the sides to the bottom and same goes for the uh, sides to the front. So I would like to have the front connected to the top and the top connected to the sides. As for the middle section, it, it won't get uh, decayed by the weather almost at all. So I'm not really worried about that. And I can see I've got these faces here, which I'm not sure where are they coming from. Let's focus on those. Okay, so here's the, where they're coming from. Let's switch to shaded view. We don't need these uh, faces. Let's get rid of those. Okay, and over this side, yeah, we don't need those. Okay, back to textured view. Let's uh, pick our uh, shell tool and drag this one down. And actually, let's drag it here. Now, let's search for the top. Let's switch to edge and select the top edge. The top edge, sorry. And look for its corresponding uh, edge and its this one here. So this is the top. Let's select the UV shell tool, move it here. Let's uh, move these two away from the others. Let's rotate it a bit, move it here and scale it up on the X axis. I think we can scale it on the Y axis down a bit until we get squares. Okay. Now let's uh, again switch to edge uh, tool and sew just these two edges. You know what, we can even sew these edges. Shift right click, move and sew UVs. And there you go, 
they are connected. Now let's uh, search for the sides. Again, let's uh, switch to edge and pick this edge. Yeah, it's this one, okay. So this is the right side. Let's select the UV shell tool, drag it here, rotate it 45 degrees and then another 45. Make sure we scale it to the right size. Looks like it could be scaled a bit on the X. Okay, let's move it to the right. Okay, now let's uh, start sewing here. Switch to edge. We want to sew these two edges and maybe these. These two also connect, but we don't want to connect those. We'll leave those as is and shift right click, move and saw. Let's just align these uh, top ones. Okay, next we'll do the left side. So let's switch to edge and see where's the corresponding one, which is this one. Okay, select the UV shell tool, pick this one, let's move it here, rotate it to 45 degrees and another 45 degrees. Make sure it's uh, spread out correctly. I think we can uh, scale it down a bit. Okay, and we can uh, scale it on the x-axis until we get perfect squares or something close to perfect. We can now move on to sewing. Switch to edge. We want to sew these two and these two. Shift right click, move and sew. And we've got perfect flowing uh, texture from the top to the sides as well as from the top to the front. These five sections won't be harmed almost, so I'll just uh, collect those together. Okay, let's pick those and place them in the center here. We've got some space. You can scale it down. And let's see how much space have I got left here. I've got uh, up to one, two, three, four, five rows. So let's move all these UVs here and scale those down, making sure I'm not uh, taking more than five rows. I can even scale it down a bit more. That uh, is pretty much it. Now let's combine these two meshes. Go to mesh and combine and let's delete its history. Edit, delete by type, history. And now we've got the UVs set in one place. Our next step would be to create the texture. To create texture, I'll first start by creating a new shader. Right click on it, assign new material, and again I'm going to use blend, and this time I'll call it post box shader. The UVs here are reversed, so let's uh, take care of that. Reverse those, okay. That's the bottom, we won't be able to see it, but uh, it's good to keep things correct. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll create the PSD Network Shader.